Good morning. Today is February the 15th, um, the year of our Lord, 2019. This is Elder Sister Debbie Stotts, looking mighty cute. Yes, I am. Um, I am about to read a diary. I was instructed to write a diary. I never written a diary. So I have been instructed to read this diary, to write this diary, and to read it. Um, today was the last day that I was, um, it came to an end today. And as I read what I have here, you're going to understand more of what I'm speaking about. Um, first of all, I would acknowledge my little robe that I'm wearing. Amen. Uh, it's going to also be mentioned in this diary, but in the vision, I had, um, a robe that was given to me with the letter hat on it and so this was so kindly made by um governess lika one of the beautiful ladies um in my uh classroom amen so let's get started it's not about all that here we go the diary of a prophetess now you're gonna see my eyes just shifting back and forth because i'm reading off of my computer everything i have the diary of a prophetess I've been unctioned by the Holy Spirit to write this diary. I was asked to write a book before. If many or any of you ever heard of the female scribe of God, Tina Martin, that's my sister. I was asked to write a book called School of Spirit. The words came very fluent, very easy. Then it suddenly stopped. Uh, before the first chapter was written and I was told to take the book and give it to my sister Tina and I did it began a journey that to this day I am at awe of her it was a prophetic launch now I feel that though I've been asked to write this as a diary I'm also guided what to write, and that's kind of strange, but it's true. I'm guided what to write. The topics, the head, the headings, everything is given by God. So even though some of the events may seem a little out of sync, I'll talk about this and then I'll talk about that, and then look like I'm coming back to a certain thing, it's all in order according to God. Now, I believe that this is another prophetic book. Mm -hmm. It's, um, I, I feel as though it's something that's written to be passed on. I don't know if whether I'm supposed to publish it, make it available in a PDF kind of form, or to do it as I'm doing it on, on YouTube, but I feel like the formats, um, the media is at my disposal, so I don't feel limited in how I want to bring this out. <laughs> um, I know at the end, it's going to do exactly what it's supposed to do. Okay, now, these entries of visions and dreams that guided my steps into my calling, to some it may seem light, but the foundations... Um, of it is for my destiny. Therefore, every jot and every dot in this journal is significant to me. Yeah. My name may not be known among many out there, but it is greatly known <laughs> in the kingdom of heaven. Yes, it is. The weight of the words, the visions, the dreams have kept hope and brought purpose then again, isn't that what it's supposed to do? Yeah, that's what dreams and visions do. They keep hope. They do. The reasons I'm unctioned to write this um, is not to establish myself. It's to usher you into an amazing journey into the voice of God. <laughs> so let's begin. February the 9th, 2019. 
You heard it right. That's the right year. This is when I started writing this. <laughs> okay. Um, some may dispute um, whether prophetess are born or called, but I see it as both. Um, if the word of God is true, and it is, we were known before the foundation of the world, which means before the world had a foundation or a form. So God also states that there are books that are written of us. This is also true. Therefore, the things I'm writing, they are already written. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? It is. It's like, oh my God, deja vu. Yes. That which is has already been written. And we tend to cross into that intersection of destiny. <laughs> yes, we do. Now, how do the call begin? Well, it begins in the thoughts, the purpose, and the will of God. Now, tell me, you weren't surprised I said that, right? Okay. That the magnificent God being first, uh, begin first contact with us, according to the conversation of Job, um, with God, he talks to us um, all, but we don't perceive that he's talking. How do you, how do, how do you say that, Debbie? Why are you saying that? Because Job said it this way. In Job, chapter 33, verse 14, it says, For God does speak, now one way, now another, though no one perceives it. In a dream and a vision of the night, when deep sleep falls on people as they slumber in their beds, the quest for knowledge begins, for wisdom, searches for truth, and seeking the deep things. God is always talking. God is always talking. Dreams, visions, through his words, through people. But the Bible says, Job wrote it down. He said, men do not perceive as God. Whether you are saved or unsaved. Sometimes we just don't perceive as God. But it is. <laughs> Let's keep going. Yes, I will. It's amazing at that precise moment when we cross destiny with God, a separation has started. We call this sanctification, a calling out. Now this calling, which is of God, I tell you, it's like a moth to a flame. It's almost instinct, but it's divine. It's almost an unspoken vow, yet God is the one that has spoken it. One has no desire to drink, no desire to gain material things. Companionship is traded for a solitary life. There is a separation going on, but it is divine. There is another guiding your heart your desires, your path. Question is, do the parents see it? Do they recognize the hand of God? As the patriarchs of the Bible did. Do they stand over the seed and speak the blessings of a righteous parent? Are the mysteries of the kingdom of God being interpreted as the Father makes first contact? Yes. <laughs> I had to think for a moment. That was February. The night. 2003. 